is Doug DeMuro, and today I'm going to talk about off-roading the Rivian R1T. I recently reviewed the Rivian truck, but I also did some pretty legit off-roading with it, and there were some good things and there were some not-so-good things, and today I'm going to tell you all about it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this square body Chevy Suburban, which brought over $20,000, this Mercedes G-Wagon, which sold for just under $160,000, and this fantastic Ram TRX, which sold for just over $90,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with a great selection and daily auctions at carsandbids.com. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, the Rivian is this new electric truck. Uh, I recently did a full review of one, which is linked in the description below, and it's sort of pitched as capable at everything. It's like a family vehicle because it has five seats and pretty luxurious, and it's a pickup truck because it has a bed and it can tow, and it's kind of a performance car with over 800 horsepower and 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, but it's also an off-roader. Rivian says up to 15 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty impressive, and and it has motors at all four corners, so there's no like differentials or anything kind of hanging in between to get in your way. And so they told me, hey, this thing is capable. You should go off-road it, beat on it, see what you can do. So uh, I, I did. I did that. <laughs> and I'm going to go over what happened, and then I'll talk over the pros and the cons of off-roading the Rivian. Okay, so general overview of the trip. Starts out east of San Diego, where I live, on sort of an off-road trail, and at first it's just a dirt road, which obviously the Rivian can do. Anything basically can't. But there are some spur trails off this dirt road that are like steep hills with a little bit of obstacles, and you take the Rivian up there and it does well. As you can see, it climbs it, but this isn't really all that technical. A lot of vehicles could do this. You just need four-wheel drive and some ground clearance, nothing that unusual. But then we get to this steep, hill that's all rocks, like a steep boulder mountain is what it looked like in person. Now, I should say at this point that when you're off-roading, nothing in video ever looks as crazy or as scary as it does in person. So there's going to be people in the comments saying, I could have done that trail in my Ford Taurus in my sleep. No, you couldn't. This was a pretty crazy rocky hill. So crazy, in fact, that I initially attempted it and didn't really get very far. My friends told me, look, you're going to damage the truck. This is not worth it. It's not going to go up it. It's too scary. Forget about it. So. We moved on and continued, and then we did like another little spur trail, as you can see, like it going up a steep hill, but in my mind, I just had that rocky mountain. <laughs> I was thinking about it. And by this point, I had started to kind of convince my friends to tell me what I wanted to hear, which was that, yeah, let's give the Rocky Hill a chance. Let's see what we can do. So we go back to the hill and we get started. Now, I start up a particular line of the hill and in just the first 10 seconds, I, had, I thought I had made an absolutely terrible mistake. Um, it was having a lot of trouble getting up. It was spinning the tires considerably and it looked like it just wasn't isn't gonna happen. So I backed up uh, on this trail and I'm sitting there kind of anxious and a guy pulls up in like a built 80 series Toyota Land Cruiser, like fantastically modified, lifted lockers, ev all the gear, it looked incredible. And I said to him, I said, hey, you know, can your truck make it up this thing? I wanted some reassurance and he goes, I've never tried, that scares me. <laughs> I was like, oh great. Like, this dude is like a serious off-roader with a serious off-road vehicle, and he's not willing to risk it, and I'm trying to do it in this, you know, <laughs> Rivian, this new truck. But I said, hey, you know, whatever, I'll give it a shot and see what, what happens. And the Land Cruiser guy literally says to me, he's like, I'm going to stick around for this. <laughs> he thought I was going to damage it, and I was going to get stuck, and it was going to be a disaster. So I went for it, and I started up a particular line, and it just kept going, and I was anxious and there were times I thought it would get stuck, but it never did, and it just powered through.
Now, I can't explain to you how terrifying this actually is. There's huge rocks everywhere. I mean, this trail had some really, really big ones. And I'm perpetually afraid that I'm going to damage this truck um, where there are no replacement parts for because it's brand new and it's really heavy. And so trying to get it like pulled out of there would be really challenging, if not completely impossible. And so if I break down or damage the truck, I am just screwed. So I'm just terrified. But I kind of pressed on and pressed on and the Rivian just kept going over stuff and doing well. So I make it about halfway up the trail and I say to myself, all right, I've proven that I can. Like if I can make it halfway, clearly I can make it the rest of the way. I'm just gonna stop and back up. But by this point, my friends were getting into it. They were like, yeah, you made it this far. You gotta go the whole way, you gotta go up to the top. And I'm like, oh God, this <laughs> is scary. So they egged me on and obviously convinced me in the end to continue, which I did. And the Rivian kept going and going over these rocks and these boulders and eventually, it did it and it made it up to the top of the hill. So anyway, I get to the top and there's this beautiful view over this whole area, very serene. Everyone else is down at the bottom, very peaceful up here. Uh, but I didn't get to enjoy any of it because now I'm sitting there thinking, I got to get this down. Now, usually that's the easy part uh, when you're off-roading, but there was a big thing that I was anxious about, specifically the Rivian's weight. It is an incredibly heavy vehicle, 6,000 pounds. And I'm sitting up there thinking, this is a very steep hill and I'm going to have to take it very slowly and carefully to maneuver around everything, which means a lot of time riding the brakes. And so I was very nervous that I would overheat the brakes given that they're going to kind of have to be just barely easy inching along and keeping this massive vehicle stopped going down a very steep hill. But I had no choice. I set off and I started to go. And once again, the Rivian started to handle it. I had some good guidance from a friend who was there to kind of steer me around the big boulders and let me know where to go on the, the ruts that were kind of scary and keep the car off balance. And it just went down. And I was riding the brakes, but it handled it and it, and it continued. And at the end of all that, the Rivian made it all the way down. And that is the greatest feeling in the world, knowing you didn't damage anything and you're not gonna have to have some multi-day recovery. And I gotta say, when I got to the bottom, there were several groups of off-roaders down there who were saying, I've tried this, I've got stuck, I've been too afraid to try this hill, I've never done it but the Rivian did it completely stock, unmodified, just put it at its high suspension height with some air out of the tires, that was it, and it made it up and down this like daunting, steep, rocky hill, which was really impressive and terrifying and proved that it was very capable. But with that said, it isn't perfect. So now I'm gonna go over some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of off-roading the Rivian. And I'm gonna start with the drawbacks. Uh, first one is something we noticed very beginning of this off-roading adventure. There is no tire pressure monitor in the Rivian that shows you the tire pressures at each wheel. And if you're a big off-roader, you'll know why this is important. You gotta air down when you're going off-roading, especially in rocky terrain, because a fully inflated tire can easily catch on a sharp rock and get punctured, and also you just want a larger contact patch with the ground. But the Rivian doesn't actually tell you what your pressures are at each tire, so you have to manually measure it. This isn't a big deal. Jeep people have been doing it for years, but a car as technologically advanced as the Rivian should have this. So many vehicles now do measure your tire pressure at each wheel, and it's disappointing that the Rivian didn't. Next up, another off-roading feature that most other off-roaders now have that the Rivian doesn't is hill descent control. So this is like almost like a cruise control system that will automatically keep the car at a certain pace so you don't have to ride your brakes terrifyingly when you're going down a hill. And a lot of off-roaders have this now, and a lot of friends 
frankly, pretend off-roaders even have it, but the Rivian doesn't. And given the size of this vehicle, it would be nice when you're going down a steep off-roading hill or trail if the car could kind of automatically give the brake pressure you need rather than you riding the brakes the whole time and potentially overheating them. Yeah. Next up, another drawback of the Rivian off-road, the camera system is really not very good. Now, I mentioned this in my review as well, the camera resolution is bad, but that's even clearer when you get out on the trails. Almost all off-roaders now have these amazing camera systems that show every corner so you can see if you're about to roll over something, and they do it with great resolution and precision, not the Rivian. The camera system does not have that many angles, it does not work that well, and the resolution is not that good. And it is probably the worst camera system of any off-road vehicle, and it's just kind of disappointing. I know a lot of people can off-road without cameras, blah, 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 but the Rivian being such a high-tech vehicle, it really ought to have a camera system that works. On that subject, the Rivian also really needs a hill hold assist feature. This was probably my biggest complaint of off-roading the Rivian, and this is gonna be, I suspect, a big complaint over the next year, two years, when you see Rivian off-roading YouTube videos. The Rivian is insanely heavy, and so if you're in a precarious situation, and you're on the brakes because you've stopped and you want to switch over to the gas to get going again, even that quarter second transfer between the gas and the brakes, you got 6,000 pounds kind of leaning on a rock or something and it will shift and it is scary. That's a scary feeling in a normal off-roader, which weighs 3,500 pounds, but in a vehicle that's double that weight, that is a really terrifying feeling. The Rivian needs a hill hold feature so that when you come to a stop like that, it keeps it locked so you can switch from brake to gas and just keep going. As it was, I was doing two-footed. I had one foot on the brake and then one foot on the gas and I would mash the gas the second I got off the brake to prevent it from even shifting its weight just a little bit. That was a scary feeling in a vehicle this heavy and frankly this valuable. Now the last interesting thing about off-roading the Rivian, it's sort of a drawback and sort of a benefit. There's no locking differential in this vehicle because like I mentioned it has four individual motors, one at each wheel. The drawback to this is that you can't put on a locking differential and kind of force the wheels to turn at the same speed. So you would encounter an obstacle and the way you would get through it was just more acceleration. And then the computers would figure out if a wheel was slipping and kind of transfer power themselves. This was very, very unnerving because you would basically just be flooring it and you're doing this in an 800 horsepower vehicle at 0 to 60 in three seconds and you're sitting there kind of mashing the throttle on an off-road trail and stuff is like spinning up and spinning around and you're just flooring it in this incredibly powerful car and it's really kind of a scary feeling until the computers get their bearings and, and make it work and get going. Now eventually it always worked and it was just fine. And flooring it in an off-roading situation is a huge no-no when you're driving a traditional off-roading vehicle because you can break a lot of stuff, but frankly the Rivian doesn't have a lot of the stuff that you're risking breaking when you're doing this in a normal off-roader. But still, it's an unusual feeling to jam the accelerator and just kind of let the car work it out as opposed to using something like a locking differential. This, I think, is something that electric vehicle off-roaders will get used to over time, but for now, it's, it's an interesting and kind of scary feeling. But, like I said, this is also kind of a benefit, because the cool thing about the Rivian with an electric motor at each corner is you don't have any stuff underneath the car. There's no differential hanging down there. You look at any other off-road vehicle and the differential will be one of the lowest points in the whole car, and it always can scrape on stuff and get damaged. Not in the Rivian, you don't have to worry about any of that so you can really get your full ground clearance 
and that is a big benefit. I gotta say, in terms of Rivian off-roading benefits, that is number one. That and the angles. The approach and departure angles are also fantastic. Very small overhangs. This vehicle was clearly designed for off-roading, and between the clearances and the angles, that gets you most of where you need to go. That is really, really impressive. Also, another interesting thing about off-roading the Rivian, another positive is, when you're actually moving on the trail, it doesn't feel quite as heavy as you might think. Now, when you're stopped and doing that transfer to the accelerator pedal, it's a little dicey, but when you're actually going, it doesn't feel dramatically heavier or bulkier than a Jeep, uh, which really, really surprised me, actually. Now, another benefit of the Rivian, it has surprisingly good tires, especially for an electric vehicle. Most electric vehicles have these low rolling resistance tires that are intended to maximize their range. Rivian could have done this, but they instead chose all-terrain tires for more capability. They sacrificed some range for some off-roading prowess, and Frankly, it was worth it because they work really well. And the last cool benefit of off-roading the Rivian is when you're done off-roading, <laughs> and you get down, you're finished, and you've done all this climbing and rock crawling and outshining all these Jeeps, you can go out and race a Ferrari and win. <laughs> it's insane. It has the capability to be sports car, supercar fast, and also as capable off-road as amazing off-roaders. And that combination has never really been seen before, and it's incredibly, incredibly cool, especially at that price point, $70,000 to $75,000. So, overall, my thoughts on off-roading the Rivian, honestly, it is a great off-roader, not just a good one. And I am an off-roader enthusiast. I have this old Land Rover, I have a Mercedes G-Wagon, very capable, I have a new Land Rover Defender, I've had a Hummer before, I've off-roaded Toyota Land Cruisers. The Rivian is up there with the very best of them. Seriously, seriously capable vehicle. And frankly, every time I thought it couldn't do something, every time it had encountered an obstacle I thought it wouldn't pass, it did it. It just did it. More power. <laughs> it just went through everything and just handled it. Now, it could use some more off-roader upgrades, including some obvious ones. Like I mentioned, hill descent control. Most off-roaders have this. Hill hold. A lot of them have that. A tire gauge built in. A better camera system. Little things here or there. But overall, as a vehicle, it was tremendously, exceptionally capable. And honestly, I was thoroughly impressed with how it performed.